can start checking the date more. I think it's August 26th today. Let's see, Saturday is August 28th. You know that. That's name day. Friday, tomorrow is the 27th. So today is the 27th. We got it right. So we're off again. I got a uh, somewhat of a fix for the, the mirrors. Let's see how it ends up working out. Uh, no signals as of yet. Uh, the batteries haven't come in. So I'm just coasting. <laughs> this differentiation. Oh, well, I'm just reporting the facts. Well, not really. Reporting and journalism. You have to do some degree of investigation. You don't simply pass along information that's been given to you. You, 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 you analyze, you figure out, well, well, who gave you this stuff? Why did they give it to me? And what does it mean in some sense? Some it's not always it's not always obvious what things are. Sometimes things can be uh, it can be uh, sort of uh, underlying subtext. Now this takes a little bit of time to do in terms of getting up. So you're not but on a 24, if you're doing news on a 24-hour basis, it doesn't seem to be the concern about the quality. You just have to get the quantity out there, and then hey, everyone's everybody's happy. But, unfortunately not, everybody is happy. But there seems to be a lot of dissension in, in, in amongst the ranks. You can see this amongst the Biden group. The Biden group is always, they're all fighting with each other. Uh, the Republicans have the same issue. They don't have anyone except for Donald Trump. Uh, Donald Trump doesn't know what he necessarily wants. To do, but if he, if, because, again, it depends on what his options are. Uh, some people don't want him to run again. Other people want him to, other people want him to run again. So there's a sort of a real state of confusion. And of course, nobody talks about the Gnostic aspects of these things. And the, the deep state are no, they're, they're Gnostics. They're pagans. They have belief in gods. And I say that correctly, gods, not God. They have a belief in gods. 
They have a war god, they have a love god, they have a this god and a that god. And these gods get angry and need to be appeased. And of course, the sacrifice, preferably human, is always the best sacrifice you can give. I mean, in in the uh, understanding of the gospel, why does Christ sa why does God as Christ sacrifice himself? Well, because this is what has been going on. Is that instead of saying to, to, to uh, everybody, instead of sacrificing animals, instead of sacrificing other people, sacrifice me. I'm the sacrificial lamb. And this was the prophecy of of, 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 of Abraham with Isaac. The lamb. That, that Christ would be the Lamb of God that would be sacrificed uh, for the sins of man. And sins actually mean sinister, so it's not just simply a blank term. So it's anything anything that we think of or anything that we do that is sinister, well, that's a sin. Made the final adjustments to the mirror, which are good. The camera's still bouncing around quite a bit, so I gotta find a way to fix that up. It's on a bar that actually moves, it, it rotates, so. Anyway, there doesn't seem the ability of any of the mainstream media, this includes RT, to really sort of differentiate between fake news and real news. So they put everything out. And this is what makes it, it makes everything so complicated because you have it leaves the reader to sort of figure out what's real, what's not real, what is sort of, you know but you can sort of you can sort of see by what's in the media that that, that of where the sentiment is going. And right now, the summit is, is focusing back towards terrorism. Which means, and this is what I've been hearing from a number of different groups. That there will be another terrorist attack on 9-11. And this is will move us away from COVID, which has now been a failure, uh, back towards uh, terrorism. But the, the, the terrorism is not going to be done by the by, by an unknown group. It will be a group done by a group linked to uh, to uh, the CIA in the United States. And of course, Mossad will get will get its bit in. And the thing is, people forget is that Israel is not a religion, it's a state, with foreign policies and so on and so forth. But this is why you need to get into Gnosis, because in many cases, like the, like the Vatican, the, the state is the religion. And where you have that as the, as the end result, where the state is the religion, you now have other factors coming into play in terms of
lot of things you do to people. So you your policy will be open and easy to see. Your goal is to fool people. However, you're also going to have other foreign policy. You're going to have other foreign policy that is hidden and underneath. And so you have an overt policy and then a covert policy. A large chunk of the covert policies that drive overt policy uh, are actually Gnostic in their origins. And so, without understanding, without bringing in those things to the equation, you're not going to do very much in terms of understanding what's going on in the world. And what happens is that the tendency, even the Gnosis, when they talk about uh, things like the maids, oh, they're all the same, they're all, they're all in cahoots with each other, and they're all, you know, doing the same thing, they're all on the same page, and this whole thing is scripted. Well, no. And there's no agenda. They may think there's an agenda, they may have an agenda, but they never actually, they never actually achieve the agenda. It's always something that they hope they achieve. So it's a hopeful agenda, but they never actually achieve it. And if you look at the history, you'll see this, you'll see this in the reality. But the Gnostics have never achieved their agenda. It's come through in bits and pieces, but never in its entirety. in the evening. I definitely have some work to do on my mirrors. Uh, better than before, but still not as good as it could be. But anyway, it's time to get back into our uh, thing. It was 9 o'clock. Uh, quarter past 9, so we're like 21 hours and 15 minutes into the uh, 26th day of August. 2021, and we're going to get into our second half of our discussion, of our conversation, the second part of the Berber essay. And we're going to go further into Gnosis and get a definition of the term Gnosis and the various different spectrums that you can expect. And this is what happens is that you can never do something significant or indeed, uh, or and that because particularly in the 10 minute uh, conversation because there's so much more there. Uh, but then, you know, we do, we do this in parts and so we can go through our various definitions. Basically, 
the most simple definition of gnosis is simply knowledge. And as I said before, it's knowledge of the beyond. So uh, it is actually metagnosis rather than gnosis itself. And there you can divide into two different parts, the pig and the non-pig. 90% of what you experience is pagan, even though it calls itself, in many cases, Christian. The Western traditions of Christianity are fully paganized. They're, they're, they're not uh, at all within the, uh, within the early Christian understanding. And the difference between pagan and non-pagan is that with the pagan aspect of things, there is no fundamental relationship with God. And you always have a master and a, a, a servant sort of type of situation. There is no fundamental unity with, with God himself other than I, have to, I won't be able to deal with that until much later on. It's in the road now and it's uh, far away. So I don't know what fell off. Or how it fell off. But it fell off. something metallic, so <laughs> had a bit of heft to it. So I'll have to sort of wait and see when it's in my place and make a determination of what actually fell off and go from there. Anyway, something indeed did indeed fall off. And I said there's not much I can do about it now. Anyways, the pagan gnosis and the way the way it exists is that there's a deity above you that you really have no connection to who is angry or this or that. They have different moods, different personalities. And you have to appease the particular god or, or, or whatever you're worshiping in order to gain favors. Even when they say that there is a command, and this is where the ones who are illumined, or so-called illumined, have been given gifts of the universe and powers, uh, to control certain things. These powers are uh, something you know, along the physical manner. That they, they, uh, how should I put this? Uh, it is a, it is something of, that is finite. It can, and it can be divided up into fractions. Uh, a large reason why calculus was developed was because to calculate these fractions of magnitude. And this is what your amulets are, this is what your gems are, these are different uh, 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 sticks that are uh, magic wands that have various different grades of powers in them. Uh, this is where all this comes into. Although you may say, oh, it's conspiracy theory, there are people who believe it. 
But the thing is, they're not all on the same page. They're, people had different beliefs within these countries. And the thing is, because of the way the Western Christianity was, which itself was pagan, it had to hide what was actually going on. And so a large chunk of this magic was hidden from people. It was only if you were considered to be illumined or illuminated, that's when you were able to sort of see what was some of what was going on. But unless you were illumined, then you didn't see anything. And this is the same too when you go to the East, you have all these various different gods, including the Hindu gods, and you'll find the exact same uh, patterns there. It was only with the, uh, the Eastern, Eastern Christianity, and again for most people they didn't really see this, that you had a fundamentally different relationship with God. And this wasn't one of, of Kabbalah, where things were received. It was an open relationship with God that one could have regardless of your station or position. In other words, your outward physical appearance, your outward position in life is not the eternal king, queen, whatever. Even paupers, uh, as a matter of fact, many of the people who were not considered to be within society like uh, Patriarch Joseph, like, like Prophet Joseph, um, Prophet, Prophet Elias. We're not always often considered part of society, but then they became, it's what they became afterwards. You know, in their, in their, in their, we'll call it, their, their, their relationship with God, as they developed in the relationship with God. And again, it what this, you know, flash of light, you're a prophet, you're amazing, and everything you do is wonderful. There was a process. <laughs> and the process really sort of depended I can't figure what fell off. It doesn't seem like there's anything missing. Uh, the process was a long one. And what you can see in this sort of process of the God, you can see the God was, was exceedingly patient. sort of see the relationship that would be opened up to everyone. Everyone can have this relationship with God. This is what the New Testament was all about. It's about opening up the relationship with God to everybody. God became a sacrifice to, to Christ. Now I say this and this has to be understood. When I say through Christ, I don't necessarily mean I don't mean that Christ wasn't God. But what happens is that with these similar things like the physics where you go to quantum physics, there are things you can observe and see, but not necessarily understand. And this is the nature of the Holy Trinity in the same way. Quantum physics really reflects is an analog to what we see with what the Holy Trinity and some of the uh, lack of understanding within uh, people who were observers of the early Christian church back at that time. Who, you know, the, the, the quantum mechanics was something, you know, that, that really kind of messed everybody up. 